Uh, I'm adding more language. I'm trying to do this sort of like slowly uh, rather than kind of like some, sometimes I've been guilty in the past of teaching like boom, this is a lesson. It's all about words and notation. You don't learn how to do anything. You just learn what things are called. Um, I have tried to avoid that. So I'm sort of um, gradually adding in new bits of language as they become relevant. Okay. So definite integrals, definite integrals. Uh, what you've been dealing with so far when you've got a function, you want to find the area beneath it, and you want to find it between particular boundaries, the upper and lower bounds, okay? This is called a definite integral. Now, of course, that begs the question, well, what other kind of integral are, is there? And we will get to that in a minute. Um, well, not in a minute. We'll get to that in a future lesson. But for now, all I want you to know is when you see boundaries, when there are numbers here and here, it's like, okay, I want you to start here and stop there. There's a definite beginning and end. Okay, and there is also a definite number at the end. This is actually equal to just like, you know, 5 or 18 or 2 pi or something like that. Okay? That's what we mean by a definite integral. Okay? So that's what these are. Now, we have a series of things that we can notice about definite integrals based on the fact that it's about like they're trying to solve the problem area. Right? Now, you've already noticed the first couple, and I'm just going to rehearse them for you just so you have it all in one place. Based on whether the function you're integrating is odd or even. Okay, so you remember? So if f is odd, okay, you can simply say if you're integrating from a boundary that's negative to the same value that's positive, so negative a to a, then of course, because those two areas are going to exactly cancel out, you're just going to get zero. Okay, and correspondingly, if you have an even function and you want to integrate that, you don't have to consider those as two separate areas. You can consider it as double the same area, right? So I would say negative a to a equals double zero to a, because you just take it right down the middle of that axis of symmetry. OK, so that's pretty simple. We call these, you know, there are two symmetric identities there. That's for oddness and evenness. But there's a whole bunch of other ones that just come out of the definition that definite integrals tell you about area. For instance, okay, so here's one, here's two, here's number three. Suppose I say to you, I want a definite integral, but I want its upper and lower bounds to be the same number. Okay, hmm. If I integrate over an interval which has no width, right, like it's from A to A, it doesn't go anywhere, then that tells you the area has to be zero, right? Like you're not actually going anywhere. So that's a simple property of a definite <coughs> integral. You go from here to here. And it's fairly easy to see why, right? Like, it's defined by the primitive. So you go f of a, take away f of a, because you've got the same boundary. So that's why you get 0. Simple stuff, right? Uh, another one, again, thinking about these boundaries, right? If instead of going from a small value to a big value, okay, a small value to a big value. Suppose I go in reverse. Rather than going from A to B, I go from B to A. Now that's kind of weird. Like, why would you even do that? But if we have a look just like I did here with how the maths pans out, you can see what the geometric meaning is. Okay? If I'm going in reverse, not from A to B, but from B to A, let's just see what happens. I'm going to evaluate the primitive. I evaluate it at the upper bound first, and then I evaluate it at the lower bound, right? Now how does this relate to all of the definite integrals that you've seen before? Like what is the definition of this? It's this one, take away this one. What's the difference? It's negative. Yeah, it's this is exactly this, but negative, okay? So this is negative, I'll put it in brackets, f v take away f a, those primitives there. So essentially what we've done is we've got that original regular definite integral, but we have the opposite. We have the negative of that. Now, what does that mean? Okay. Well, remember, I tried to explain that derivatives are about change at an instant, and integrals are about a, a sum total change. A total change. How much have you changed from here to here? Well, this is kind of like going backwards in time, right? It's like, well, rather than starting here and then going forward to a few hours, right? Imagine going backwards. Well, the effect will be, I'll be, you know, reverse where I started from, okay? So the algebra tells you that fairly simply. 
Okay, two more, uh, three more. The next two are about dividing up these upper and lower bounds. We call this the interval over which we integrate, okay? So I'm integrating, for example, from A to B here, or B to A, or A to A. That interval can be divided up, okay? So for instance, here's my um, one, two, three, four, fifth one. If I have an integral from A to B, I can pick any value between A and B in the middle, if you like, so I'll call it M. And I can say, well, I'll do the first chunk, right? Integrate that little bit. And then I'll just do the next chunk, right? So from A to M, and then from M to the end, which is B, right? Now, what this corresponds to is when you think about just as composite areas. It's a simple idea, okay? And this is one kind of integral you need to know how to separate out. The second kind is when you actually have, rather than you want to divide up the interval, if you want to divide up the integrand, okay? So if you have an integrand that's made up of multiple functions, right? So maybe we'll call them f and g. Okay? Because integrating works just like differentiating, right? Except in reverse. Because if you differentiate two things together, it's the same as differentiating them one at a time, you can do exactly the same thing with integration. So I can say a to b of that function is going to be added to a to b of this function. Okay? Now you remember I told you a little while ago when we were doing graphing and we did addition of ordinates. Sorry, I'll finish quickly. Right? Addition of ordinates, it's really simple. right? You just say, okay, I've got uh, one graph and then I've got you know, another graph. And then you add those values together and you get something something else as a what am I gonna get? Something else as a result. Okay? Now simply thinking about all of these values here, right? Like this value, this value, this value, this value, plus this value, this value, this value, the ordinates, these are the ordinates. Do you see that? It's those heights of those rectangles that you're adding up. Okay? So that's a simple one. One last property, sixth one, in some ways the most obvious, but it's a bit strange. Uh, this definite integral, right? Do you notice that when I go back to this definition, the x's, they all disappear because they all get substituted for a's and b's, actual numbers, right? So the x's don't really matter, right? They're going to get substituted for some numbers once I go through the process. So therefore, I don't have to call it x. I could call it, say, u. Right? Because that letter, it's just sitting there for a moment, a pronoun that sits there until I substitute a number in. I could call it, I don't know, how about T? Or another common one might be theta, right? I can integrate with respect to any variable I like. Now this is actually, even though it seems very simple, right, because it just stems out of this, this is a crucial idea because it now divorces, well not necessarily divorces, it starts to help you see integration is not just about widths. If we wanted to, integration could be about heights. It could be changes in an angle. It could be changes in time. It could be anything, right? Now this idea is so important that it gets its own name. This x, y, u, t, theta, because it's a variable that just vanishes away, it's just there for a second, it gets called the dummy variable. It's not really there. It's just standing in. Okay? It's a temporary placeholder until I can actually put numbers in there. Okay? And that starts to unshackle integration from just finding out rectangles. You can do all kinds of things.